My name is Heda Bruinsma and you're listening to my conversation with Jelle van Veene, recorded during Legal Geek Europe. Jelle is innovation manager at Kennedy van der Laan and founder of Dutch Legal Tech. He has deep understanding of legal innovation in the Netherlands and Belgium. And today we discuss the growth of legal tech in the region and why high quality data is key to effective legal AI. Jelle, nice to have you in the show. Thank you for making the time. Thanks Heda, great to be here. Yeah, we are just uh, two hours into Legal Geek. It's super busy, there are a lot of people. Uh, we have some sound also here at the background. And you had a, your talk at the beginning of Legal Geek, I think, uh, what is it, one hour ago? Yeah. What, what was uh, the message of your talk to the, to the audience of Legal Geek? Yeah, so my message was quite simple, I think, but necessary for moving legal innovation forward. So I'm an innovation manager at Amsterdam Law Firm Kennedy van der Laan. We do a lot of uh, IT, but we also have a great AI team. Yeah, one of uh, the bigger, like, non south us firms in, in Amsterdam. Yes, non south us definitely. <laughs> I don't know um, if this is an English term, but I make it up now. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. We are, like any law firm, we're looking to innovate uh, using AI to help our lawyers work better, make our services better. But one of the things that I run into is that our lawyers actually use a lot of types of information, right? So they use uh, things like um, uh, court decisions, but also uh, articles, uh, but uh, also their own document management systems, uh, their own templates, all kinds of files. And what we see now with AI tools is that separate AI tools are being developed for all the sources that our people use. So which would mean that for a single lawyer to use AI across their content, they would have to learn six different tools. And that's not really usable, right? That's not really uh, effective. It also would mean that people would have to train on all kinds of different tools for any uh, different type of questions that they have. So my call today was actually to the audience of Legal Geek. So there's a lot of councils here. There's a lot of law firms. My call was, please go talk to your vendors and ask them uh, about integration, about how they can connect to different sources. Uh, because we don't want six different tools. We want one simple, we want the best AI tool uh, to access all those sources. And it's not only for us as a law firm that this is important. Talk about your role at Kennedy van der Laan as an innovation manager. Yep. And you have all the different AI tools and you have a lot of lawyers in, inside of the firm. They want to work with AI. I think you adv maybe advise them or you, you help them with, with integration. Uh, what, are you, what are you seeing at your own law firm? regarding legal AI and working with all these different tools and, and the wishes of the lawyers. Yes, yeah, so what I see is that working with AI is, a, um, is, is not about tools, it's mostly, mostly about learning and about developing as a lawyer. So a first response to any person, uh, lawyers included, to AI is to, uh, to test it. Is it as good as me? Experiment is with it, it as smart as me? Can I beat it, basically, right? They, they, like, they like to do competition with AI tools to see if, 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 if they can beat it or that the AI tool beats them. Yeah, they like to uh, have a competition and they, well, for instance, they ask AI a difficult and very new legal question that they are themselves working on. And then they, they see the answers and they're like, okay, interesting, or I, I know it better. Well, they see the answers and they say, well, this is not quite correct. I am actually better at this. But the, 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 the learning moment there is AI should not be uh, treated as a competition or as a replacement of lawyers. You have to think about which parts in my process, in my myself answering this question, take a lot of time and take a lot of working through documents and gathering documents and searching them uh, and summarizing them that, that, that AI can do for me. So that I then, as a well-trained, very smart lawyer, can make up my own mind about the right outcome of all this information. So education, training, it's, it's, it's very important and it's also core of, of, of the strategy within your firm, but I think also in other firms, that lawyers really understand how these tools work and, and, and what you can do it and what you cannot do it. Because that last point is also very important. That last part is, is definitely key. So what I also mentioned in my presentation this morning, we don't not only want AI to be able to provide us with an answer, we also want it to tell us where it got that answer from, so we can check ourselves using our own trusted, verifiable sources what the answer is. Because as a lawyer, you will always be responsible for the answer that you give to a client, whether it be in an advice or in another uh, other form. You are responsible, and you should always be able to check because AI is very well known to hallucinate. 
to make up its own conclusions um, is very good at that, but you have to be very aware of that. So you, in training, you need to know, as you mentioned, the limits of AI very well um, and your own processes you have to develop for dealing with those limits. And you need to have like very good data. The, the data should be of very high quality also the, the, the AI tools are trained with, with certain data and I think data is getting more and more important. Uh, I, I, I guess this was also part of your talk, which you, which you said in the beginning. Like data is, is core of this whole process and, and where are the articles coming from? Where is the, uh, like the legal cases? Where are they coming from? And, and can we see where they're coming from as a lawyer? Yes, that, that is absolutely key. Um, AI or large language models in themselves don't know anything other than how to put words together in a convincing manner. Um, if you want AI to provide a relevant answer, you have to also provide it with the right context, the right information upon which it can base that answer. So data is, is absolutely essential, non-negotiable, as a basis for uh, having good AI output. And, and we have quite a crowded legal AI market in the Netherlands. You just said with legal tech, a Dutch legal tech, you, 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 yeah, you released a, a legal AI mar uh, map. You always do, of course, the Dutch legal tech map where you see all the legal uh, applications, legal companies in the Netherlands and I think also in Belgium. Yeah, so we, we in, indeed, we just launched uh, this morning a legal AI map uh, of legal AI applications that are available to people to use in the Netherlands, uh, Belgium and, and Luxembourg. So the Benelux, that's what we're focusing on. Um, because we believe that there are so many great ideas out there, so many great companies out there, uh, but they're young, they're trying to find their way mostly, and we would love to give them a push. A, a stage. A stage, visibility, right? But because we really believe that there, there's a lot of uh, to be gained by developing these companies further. But, but, it, but it is a busy market and they're all competing with each other and they're all, every tool is saying, I'm the best, we have the best output, we have the best data, we have the best knowledge. What is your view on how this market will develop? Because in my opinion, we cannot have such a busy market and, and I think companies will stop or will, I don't know, do a pivot. What, what is your view on, on, on the future of like the whole legal AI market and then maybe more specific in the Netherlands? Yeah, so indeed, we see, uh, we see a lot of companies coming up. We see a lot of funding coming up. Uh, of course, the Harveys and Lagoras internationally, millions and millions of investment. Uh, and in the Netherlands, a lot of companies are also coming up. And I believe that there's far more investment and there's value in the market to be had with these legal AI tools. Um, at the same time, we also see that many of the AI tools available are not very different from one another. So people are trying to find their way, uh, find their market fit, as it's called. Uh, by p slight variations in their approach in how they uh, offer value to the market. Uh, and I believe actually that, well, there are not that many at this time that really, really succeed in distinguishing themselves, improving why they should be uh, the one that a law firm or a council buys or uses. So in my opinion, there is going to be major shifts in the coming year or two years in... Um, on one hand, uh, the number of startups that will be on the market, uh, many of them will disappear. Some of them might grow explosively because there is great value to be had. There also will be a shift in the vendors that we are, as law firms and councils, using at this point. They are also, everybody is experimenting with AI, developing their AI products. Uh, all R&D budgets are going to AI uh, as of uh, two years ago. So there also will be great changes coming from that uh, from that end, from the uh, incumbent fans. And, and, and you, uh, w within Kennedy van der Laan, is there already, and I, you don't need to mention the tool, but is there already a tool which you tested in, say, the last few months where you were like, all right, this is, this is better than the rest? Or is it still, they're all a bit the same and some have some uh, advantages and some have some like, yeah, disadvantages? Yeah, we have been talking and working with uh, quite a few different AI vendors. Um, and like I mentioned, the, the, the fun thing about the market at this point is that everybody is trying to um, is trying to invent uh, the best way to use AI and legal. So we see smart young people really trying to move forward. 
and everybody has a different kind of approach. So uh, one party might be very good in technology, one party might be very good in uh, deploying the application about adoption, uh, one company might focus on uh, UI, all kinds of aspects where each time for us it, uh, a talk usually leads to new insights. Yes, we do have to think about this as well. This is something that we need to consider that our lawyers need. Uh, so, at this point, there is there is no clear winner. There There's is no clear there, winner. There's no clear winner. No. Do you, do you think there will be a clear winner in in the future? I I had a I had a talk with uh, w with some lawyers, and they had the feeling that one or two platforms will be like a Swiss Army knife, where you can do everything, and then you have like a. Yeah, you don't need to word anymore. You just log in into the platform and you can do everything there as a lawyer. Is that also what you think will happen in, in a few years? Well, it might be that AI disappears basically, right? Disappears. Yeah, so uh, of course, when you ask Word to do something, it will do it for you. Uh, connected to your legal sources. That might be the way to go. I, I'm not sure, uh, but that would be great in my opinion. Yeah. No extra tools, just extra... Uh, smart ways of working. Uh, what, what is your view on the on the business models of, of law firms? I, I, I mean, you're an innovation manager, you try to speed up innovation wi within Kennedy van der Laan, you try to make it efficient. Uh, there are also some lawyers now, they say, yeah, we, we get clients and they want us to use AI, but then they say, yeah, but then we, <laughs> we want to have a lower, uh, a lower hourly rate or a lower bill because you use AI and you do your work uh, smarter and faster, so we, we pay less. Is, is this something that you take into account in the whole innovation part inside of your uh, law firm? Yeah, of course, it's, it's, it's essential, right? The business model, why we do our work and the way we do it, that, that's what this all revolves around. So um, uh, clients, I feel, now fear that lawyers will extend their work to AI and charge the same, the same number of hours that they would without AI, but that's of course not uh, not the not the way to go about things, right? So, um, I believe that a lot of lawyers in the near future will be using AI, will be getting more efficient, but also what we're focusing on is getting to a higher level of quality sooner. So, being able to deliver better work and maybe even sooner than before. Um, and. Um, Probably, uh, I'm not. I'm not the only one uh, to talk about this. But probably, the the, the hourly rate uh, will be our model for some time as well. But if we can provide the same quality advice or higher quality advice faster, at a better, uh, better, better number on the bill, then the clients will come to us, right? So it, it's it's um, it's a competitive advantage, it's a better service to our clients, so we will benefit from this as well, even if we don't charge extra for it. And it's also important to have this conversation maybe with your clients and to be transparent about how do we use AI and, and, and how transparent can we be about the systems that we use to do our work. Definitely. Uh, we, we really need to have that conversation with them. Also because we see already that clients themselves are referring some of their legal work to AI tools which means that we have to look at uh, work products that might have been developed by AI. So uh, part of our work might already be shifting towards AI and we have to deal with that. We have to uh, also talk to our clients about how to do this responsibly and what our role as lawyers would be. You also have to teach your clients or educate your clients a little bit about AI maybe, sometimes, and, maybe. and how to use it. I mean, teach is not a good word, but help them understanding how it works and, and what they could do with it and what, what, what you are also doing with it as a law firm. I think there, there needs, because our clients are, 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 are savvy as well. They, they, they are, are, are smart people working with this, uh, but we do need to have an honest conversation about the roles and responsibilities in doing legal work where AI is involved. What do we do with AI? What do they do with the AI? And how do we make sure that the end product is really good. And and for last question, for, for law firms, maybe smaller law firms that are listening to this conversation, you already have a lot of experience now with experimenting with AI, with implementing it in certain forms inside of a big a big law firm. What, what should be like the first three steps that they need to take if they want to have AI inside of their law firm, but they don't know where to start? Yeah, for so for a small uh, law firm, getting AI on board is, is, a, is a big investment. Um, 
usually mostly in time because there's only what two or three lawyers in, in, in 85 percent of Dutch law firms I believe and you need to learn how to work with this system you need to learn how to work with the system um, but I think that you do not have to learn by yourself so uh, working with other small law firms might be uh, might be interesting having conversations with other laws small law, firm, law firms about the successes that they have achieved um, I think working together can be uh, really interesting here. Uh, actually, the Dutch uh, Bar Association already, already supported a process for, uh, for telling uh, small firms about sharing the opportunities. Knowledge. Yes. So sharing. Sharing is caring, like Dao mentioned in his talk this morning. Good luck with, with everything you're doing and thank you so much for your time. And I hope you have a great day here at Legal Geek. Thank you very much. It's great you. to be here.